What's popping, y'all? From wherever you're listening from, my name is Kenzie Rock, and you're tuned into the podcast KR Live. This is season two of the podcast, and we'll be talking about books, 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 and nothing apart from books. Today's episode will be focusing on how to write your first novel. These are the do's and the don'ts. So before we begin, please check out our social media, which is on Instagram at podcast by Kenzie. My social personal social which is kenzie underscore rock 100 on twitter you can find me at kenzie rock 100 snapchat you can add me at kenzie rock and all the links will be in the description depending on where you're listening from so let's begin today's episode So welcome back once again to the podcast. So regarding today's episode, the do's and the don'ts of writing your first novel, a big question I've been receiving over the years is how, Kenzie, how do you write? How do you collect all these ideas and put them into a piece of writing? Now today is a lucky day because I'll be telling you how I started my first novel, which is actually not complete, but I'll give you steps on what I use when it comes to writing. So whether you're writing your first novel or your fifth, writing a novel requires focus, planning, motivation, and a lot of discipline. So here are 10 do's and don'ts of writing your first book. Plan and structure your book and your time. That is the first thing, the first step before anything else. You just plan and structure your book and your time. Writing a book is a mid to long term project. It may take months, sometimes it could take years, but unless you're like one of those rare authors who can churn a book out of a week or two, which personally I'm not that talented, if you don't want to write your novel on a drag on, planning is very very essential planning also makes you sense because an underlining plan will help you avert writer's block and um, if you want to know more about writer's block you can go to episodes behind I actually have an episode regarding writer's block to begin planning your book set a deadline for completing your first draft for example you've begun writing on uh, February the 12th and you want your first draft out by October 12th. That's your first step. What will this help? It will help you in knowing what time of day you want to write, how many hours you want to use in writing and uh, what days you'll use to write in order to achieve your goal. From here, you can work out how many words you need to write per day on average let's say 5,000 words a day or 200 words a day it all depends on you Um, but for example you can actually give yourself a whole year to finish the first draft not the whole novel the first draft and uh, your necessary word count per day could be by length 364 or 365 and uh, the standard length of your novel could be 80,000 to 100,000 words for the whole book so this will actually make you know per day and you write exactly 500 words what days are this monday wednesday sunday great what time 9 p.m to 12 p.m amazing so you have done a whole lot of planning and this will make your writing run more smoothly and for a very short period if possible Structure each writing session in advance so that you have a clear plan of what you will be writing on uh, and on and uh, where it fits into a larger picture. If, uh, if you already have a story outline, build which parts of the story arc you will work on during each session into your plan. In a week or a month planner, write for example, you write the first scene, the protagonist receives word of an approaching army, forms party to defend the village, and uh, if you're not sure of the outline, you can uh, plan out ideas which will build your outline. Did you get that? You just build an 
outline and if you can build a whole outline for a planner just put tiny ideas that will build your outline and from this outline you can build a whole full planner a second step is keep any research you need in an organized accessible place if you're somebody who writes uh, on not on notebooks before you type keep your pieces of writing close to you let's say in a folder or in a drawer somewhere you know they're right there and uh, when you need to review or need inspiration that's where you go if uh, you're using your laptop or your PC to type and uh, your inspiration is in form of files put them in a whole combined folder in forms of different files in a folder the more organized your inspirational works are it will be easier to find them when you need them so some books demand more background research than others if you are writing about an unfamiliar location take a tour on google street view that's what i did actually there was a story i was writing and i needed islands from uh, uk so i had to go to google maps search up islands and from that i could actually find an island that could fit my story description so it might be stupid to some or time wasted to some but this will actually give you accuracy and uh, it uh, will avoid you making a bad picture of a certain place let's say for example you were writing about a certain location you're writing about a certain culture without having the right facts about this you will actually end up ruining the view of this place from the rest of the world and that is why it's recommended that you do a background check first if you're trying to find locations you have to do a background check of those locations make them exact if they're not made up locations if you're using real locations please research if you're using real people please research if you're using real cultures please research as long as whatever you're using are factual research on it one way to organize your research is to keep a master document he said a big document with tiny files inside that is like an alphabetized uh, dictionary of your story in progress under uh, each letter you can add relevant information for example under uh, the letter L in your folder you could have locations write down each location in your novel as you write your story or create new ones with new places that don't exist Note any important features next time each entry and this will actually help you in developing a very nice story. For example, um, I'm taking a story about Cape Town, South Africa, the seaside city, center of tourism, wine growing region, ethnically and culturally diverse, wide world gap. That is good research. Brief but precise. You captured everything you needed and putting it in an actual folder makes it easier to find when you're writing. Having an overview of the individual places, themes, characters, cultures and other elements of your novel that you can refer to back when you need them will actually bring your fictional world to life. You'll find that most of the times you read specific novels and you'll feel like I am in this place, I feel connected to this location, even though you've never been into it, you've never seen this place, you've only heard of it, seen pictures of it, but through reading this novel, you actually feel as though you're right there at that moment, and that's what you want to achieve when you're writing it. You have to get facts if you're trying to build a makeup place using real locations. If you're trying to use an actual location, you actually have to research about it. If you're trying to use real cultures or cultures that existed a long time ago and don't do now, you actually have to do in-depth research so that you make sure that your readers are pushed into it, they're captured into it, and they're enslaved into it, and they're locked in there, and they're like, I love this. I love this because it feels as though I'm there. Next step after this is write every day without fail. If you've had my previous podcast, that's what I said. Write, write, write every day without fail. Have an exact schedule that you'll stick to because this will help you achieve your goal when it comes to writing. And writing every day, even when you least feel like it, is helpful because you don't know. 
during the day you might have ideas so whatever ideas you find jot it down and then when it comes to the moment that you're supposed to write just write down every single idea you had because it's your first draft and the final is what will make things amazing so just write every single day without fail write every single day stick to a specific schedule when you don't have any form of distractions it could be 15 minutes it could be an hour personally i take almost five hours stuck on my computer screen writing but you don't have to do as much as i do just take your precious time whatever works out for you and that will be very very helpful and you'll thank me for that the next step is list rationalizations for not writing and put them to one side i'll repeat this list rationalizations for not writing and put them to one side so as writers we find endless reasons why we can't write personally i do i actually do i'll have a lot of reasons like at the fin- tips of my fingers i'm like okay i'm too tired today or it's too cold i don't feel like waking up from bed or that i don't feel like switching up my computer or my hands are tired or i'm having like the <laughs> I strain because I stayed too much on my computer. So, put these distractions all in one place. If you're writing your first novel, most especially, or even your second, or even your third, or even if it's your tenth piece of writing, it's helpful to journal about the process yourself. This might seem stupid, but it's actually very helpful. And it helps when you do this because writing down doubts, surprises, insights, self-discoveries, anything that is worth keeping in your mind will actually be helpful when it comes to your writing. Sometimes simply writing down the doubts that make it easier to put them into one side and focusing on the most important task which is finishing your book might be the key that you need in order to complete this book or this piece of writing that you want to complete so take all these tiny reasons big and small put them in one basket why don't you want to write why don't you feel like writing put them in one basket and then on the side have reasons why you write why you want to write why you're writing this specific thing and every time you think about not writing Pick into your jar of why you write and you will get back on track. Next, keep a list of helpful questions to ask yourself as you go on. If you're dealing with detail-oriented by nature, you might not get lost by describing particulars on your scene or even new scenes on your novel. Like personally, I actually don't lose actually don't lose focus when it comes to my scenes i might not write for a month but i'll remember exactly where i stopped from and uh, in other cases if you're focused on the whole plot arc and not individual characters motivations and scenes your novel might meander into something off-road from what you wanted neither is a catastrophe but you can keep a balanced perspective by keeping a list of useful questions to ask yourself as you write. For example, you have a piece of writing. Why do I want this character in my book? How will this character pop up in the book? When will they pop up in the book? Where will they pop up in the book? How will they pop up in that book? And when, when? they not be part of the book so you see from that you can make up a story about this character for example once upon a time there lived a man this man was poor but then the man won the lottery he became rich until suddenly he lost all the money in gambling but then he realized that the wife kept a spare piece of the winnings. The end. So you have something to write about. You know how you'll start. You know how it will go on. You know where the twist comes in. You know when the twist will end. That is what you're supposed to do. 
in order to prevent yourself from writing all sorts of corners all sorts of stories and then you end up ruining your whole piece of writing so how to write your first novel in terms of questions is are my characters distinct from each other or are they similar does each have an identifiable voice or a set of goals or motivations what makes them similar what makes them different from each other am i including enough sense details e.g smell touch fictional world in this mind of the character what do you want your character to be like am i an original person enough no deed as a doornail or other cliches you know you have to like channel a path like a straight straight path no matter how many corners might pop up you have to make sure that your character goes into one path one situation must lead to another and that situation must lead to another situation these are the questions you must ask yourself every single time you're writing but now when you're working on your first book what don't you do what are the things you should absolutely avoid one is continuously changing your mind about your story and starting over don't do that whatever idea you had in the beginning stick to it that is the original idea that's the fresh idea if you realize that your ideas are running out keep away from the book take a day to relax take a day to to just Remember why you were writing that book, but don't change your ideas. Please, please, please don't change your ideas. If you're just working on your first novel, committing to one story idea can feel daunting. Resist the urge of continuously abandoning your novel for a better story because every idea is a great story idea. No matter how bad you might think it is, you can actually change it into something great. But don't throw it away. Just add situations into your story and it will change every single perspective you had about that story because all stories are great and that is what matters. The risk of starting your own novel over perpetually is uh, that you'll end up with 20-something story startups. Like I personally had um, four startups with my first novel. Like you remember in the previous podcast, I told you I did the first one, the second one the third i changed my book three times put it aside started a new one with the same idea did it twice went back to the first one because i realized that the first idea was actually way better than anything else could have ever been because it was fresh nobody had ever thought of it it was nowhere i hadn't told anyone about it that was my idea that was my world and that is what i wanted so stick to your first idea. Never change it for any reason. If you find out that you're getting stuck, add situations into your idea, but don't change it for something new. Secondly, don't underestimate what it takes to write a novel. Please. Some writers have visions of uh, publishing success and acclaim from the start. This will never happen. This will never happen unless you're already famous. Your book won't become famous overnight. You have to work for it. And there are testimonials about people working and working hard for all their novels to be read and be somewhere. No one will give you like a perfect picture world that you write your novel today. It will get published within the end of the year. And by the beginning of the next year, your book would have sold 3 billion copies. That's a lie. That that's a very clear lie and nothing like that will ever happen. So don't expect miracles on your first book or even in the fifth. It doesn't work like that. It will take time. It will take process. And just trust it. And in the end, you'll be proud of the results. Thirdly, don't focus on building your world into the inclusion of compelling relationships. This is important advice on writing your first novel especially. It's uh, actually the courtesy of an author named Robert Twigger. 
trigger questions against focusing so much on descriptive detail that you neglect to create vivid relationships between you and your character. So you'll find that while your fictional world stimulates the reader's senses, the relationships within your book will anchor the reader's feelings, letting them invest something in your character's lives and choices. And that is what you are not supposed to do at all. Completely. So also don't make everything fit your pre-convinced plot. Like I said, you can make changes. You can make alterations within your story. Don't toss it away, just make alterations. For example, you wanted to stick within one path of your main character being a hero, but it seems so boring. Your character can always be a hero. You have to put in challenges in it. You have to make your, your character go through pain. You have to make your character go through suffering. And this is what we actually call a character arc, which will mold and shape your character's path into what you want them to be. So don't make everything fit for a pre-convinced plot. That will never work. It will make your story boring and uh, not read-worthy. Just switch it up. Create conflicts in between. Make problems pop up. Create mysteries in between. Make a cliffhanger when it comes to certain situations. These excitements will actually ensure that your book will get a lot of reviews, a lot of reads, and will make your plot much more better than the original thing that you thought about. Also, don't tell the reader everything about your character within the first introduction. Have them guess. Have them imagine what this character will be like. That is actually very fascinating when I read certain books and I'm like, whoa, this is not what I thought this character was like. So you're just introduced to a certain character and you're like, this character is so bad. This character is evil. And then you read on and you're like, oh, so he's the hero this other character was actually the bad guy that's what you want your writers to be like you want them to guess you want them to keep on guessing what this character is what his world is like don't introduce everything on a silver platter within the first pages and you're like this person was old was poor didn't have anything so everything else that will come by it will be like okay this was predictable right just introduce this character very vaguely as vague as possible because when you first meet someone new there are mysteries to you right over time you discover details like their backstory their core beliefs their values their likes their dislikes and details such as their favorite sayings and expressions the same should also be for your characters in the novel if you begin a character with description with details and of this character's face, this character's feelings, their wants, their fears, their beliefs. This will all become so overwhelming to the reader. It also is less likely to leave the reader tantalized to read the book. So the reader has like less reasons to want to get to know your character better and they end up not even finishing your book. So keep all the above do's and don'ts on two different platters please don't mix them up because the do's are highly very very important and the don'ts are actually some things that will guide you not to stray away from the do's and i hope you remember all that from the above because writing your first novel is very hectic very very hectic i personally know this leave alone your first novel your first writing is very very hectic so what you should do plan, structure your time, keep all your research organized, research very deeply, write every day without fail on a specific schedule, and list your rationalizations for not writing and put them all aside. And keeping a full list of helpful questions like I said to ask yourself as you go on will help you develop a very nice and very interesting story for your readers and your readers will appreciate your amount of effort that you did to put this story into view so i hope 
you learned a lot from today's episode on the do's and don'ts of writing your preview your first novel and the uh, previous episode was about the do's and don'ts of becoming a writer you can go and listen to it but for now this will be it until the next episode i hope you enjoyed you can leave your likes and comments and subscribe to the google podcast channel kr live it's also available on google podcast spotify and right now we are working on getting it on amazon music so skip keep keep up the good work guys on listening and sharing it right now we have achieved a world demograph we are available on usa south africa uganda russia turkey sri lanka weird places so i thank you all for being part of this and for listening to the podcast my name has been Ken's rock this is care life you can follow my socials once again ig kenzie underscore rock 100 personal social the podcast social is podcast by kenzie twitter is kenzie rock 100 snapchat you can add me at kenzie rock and surprise surprise we have a youtube channel unicorn rainbow links to all the socials including the youtube channel will be in the description if you don't find it find one social you'll find all of them until next time bye loves